This is All Saints Sunday. All Saints Sunday is when we remember fellow Christian believers who have passed away, fellow sheep of Jesus' flock who are now in Christ's care in heaven. They're now with Jesus in heaven. The way the word saint is used in the Bible, it refers to those who trust in God. In the New Testament, the word saint especially denotes all our Christian brothers and sisters, all believers in Christ Jesus. Saints are all those who follow Jesus. As used in the New Testament, the word saints isn't just for those who have died. It's for everyone who believes in Jesus Christ, including the living. But we're especially thinking of our fellow believers, our sisters and brothers in the faith who have passed away. All Saints Sunday is intended to be a worship service in which we especially remember deceased brothers and sisters of Jesus' flock. So today, we are remembering our fellow servants, our sisters Elsie Detman and Shirley Kirkhoff, whom we gave over to the care of Jesus during the past year. Elsie and Shirley were fellow workers with us at St. Paul's Lutheran Church over many years.
O Lord, the crown and reward of all your saints, grant us grace that as we follow their steps, we may walk in your ways and live with you in eternal joy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. They fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and glory and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are the ones who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of the water of life and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Our Gospel lesson comes from the Gospel according to Matthew, the fifth chapter, beginning at verse 1. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Grace and peace to you in the name of our risen Lord Jesus Christ. On All Saints Sunday, we're remembering our fellow Christians. At St. Paul's Lutheran Church, we're remembering our sisters Elsie Detman and Shirley Kirchhoff, whom we gave over to the care of Jesus during the past year. That's what we did at their funerals. As part of their funerals, we handed their care over to Jesus, their good shepherd. Elsie and Shirley were fellow workers with us at St. Paul's over many years. All through the Gospels, we read how Jesus was teaching his disciples about the kingdom of heaven. So, 
in order to explain about the kingdom of heaven, he told many different parables that began, the kingdom of heaven can be compared to. But in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus taught more directly about the kingdom of heaven. He more directly explained how people will feel and behave in the kingdom of heaven. So in the Beatitudes, which are the beginning of the Sermon on the Mount, we learn about the experience of being in the kingdom of heaven, what it feels like, how we should behave. This is the Beatitudes passage we just read. Now, the opening Beatitude is the most famous one. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. But by definition, those who are in heaven are rich in spirit rather than poor in spirit. Just by definition, blessedness is being rich in spirit. So Jesus is explaining about a different experience of blessedness than we might expect. A paradoxical sort of blessedness, an experience of blessedness in this sinful world. An experience of feeling poor in spirit is different than what we'd expect in heaven. We may think of it as an experience of heaven in the here and now. And Jesus wasn't talking about wishful thinking. He showed that the kingdom of heaven was appearing. He healed people. He performed actual miracles that proved that the kingdom of heaven had come. And he told his disciples to pray for whatever they needed, and it would be provided. So, the kingdom of heaven is absolutely real. But the experience of the disciples following Jesus and serving him in his ministry in this world is in fact one of being poor in spirit. Now that's paradoxical. How can that be? Beatitude, which is the experience of being in heaven, should be the experience of being rich in spirit. You would think, shouldn't it? That's the definition of the word beatitude, being filled with every possible blessing. What do you imagine heaven to be like? Shouldn't we feel peaceful and safe and protected in heaven? Shouldn't all suffering and want and hunger and danger and evil be gone? But that's not the case as we serve Jesus here in this life. When we're taking part in the kingdom of heaven, we're poor in spirit, not rich in spirit. Now, in this life, Jesus means something very paradoxical. Those blessed disciples who are living in the kingdom of heaven are actually poor in spirit. It's the opposite of what you might expect. So, the experience of the kingdom of heaven is all about living by hope in the midst of so much suffering and evil and danger of all sorts. The disciples who experience the miraculous kingdom of heaven are poor in spirit, not rich in spirit. It's the opposite of what we might think, yet there's Jesus right with them. So let's focus on the second beatitude. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Today we're remembering those who passed away during the last year, and we are mourning their loss. This life is full of mourning for lost loved ones. The older we get, the more we mourn. 
Children mostly have little experience of mourning, and they don't know how to mourn. But the older we get, the more we must learn to mourn. More and more we miss our loved ones who have died. The second beatitude tells us that, living according to the hope we have in Christ, we can be comforted, even though we are mourning. It's the opposite of what we might have thought. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. We really are mourning, but the hope that we are living by provides comfort. We, are ex we experience comfort in the kingdom of heaven, though we are mourning the loss of our loved ones. We know that our loved ones are now with Christ in heaven, experiencing true blessedness. And the second beatitude suggests that we'll do a lot of mourning too. We receive the comfort because of hope. Heaven is eternal. When we're in heaven, we experience eternity. It's an experience of eternal blessedness in God's presence. That's heaven. But the kingdom of heaven is an experience of heaven in the here and now. And that means living in the midst of a sinful world by hope in the victory that Jesus won over sin, death, and the devil. We're living in the midst of a sinful and troubled world. We hope in Christ's salvation from sin, death, and the devil. And it's a sure hope. It's not just wishful thinking, though we can't really experience the true beatitude of heaven yet. But millions of Christians assure us that it is a certain hope. Our hope is very strong. On the other hand, those saints whose passing we are mourning are now experiencing true beatitude in Christ's care. We've entrusted them into the care of heaven. They are now in eternity with Christ. That's the certainty that our hope gives us. We are certain that they are now in heavenly beatitude, and that is a comfort to us who mourn. So it's a paradox. We who are invited to enter the kingdom of heaven find that we must mourn a lot. But our hope in Christ comforts us. We experience some of the blessings of heaven even while we mourn. Heaven isn't some dreamy place where we are three quarters asleep. Heaven is m even more real than this life. In heaven, we'll be even more awake than in this life. So, Jesus invites us into the kingdom of heaven. It's an experience of heaven in the midst of this life, and it involves living in a solid and sure hope of eternal beatitude with God in heaven, though we must often mourn and be poor in spirit. Even so, the kingdom of heaven is only a foretaste of the experience of heaven. Our hope is secure. We are confident of sharing fellowship again with many loved ones who have passed away. We've given them into the care of the Good Shepherd who is looking after them. Our hope in Christ is strong. We will be with them again. May the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.
Litany of All Saints. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. In mercy, hear us. God, our Father in heaven, have mercy on us. God, the Son, our Redeemer, have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Holy Trinity, one God, have mercy on us. We give you thanks that those saints who die in the Lord still live with you in joy and blessedness. For the faithful who have gone before us and are at rest, we give you thanks, O Lord. For the prophets of old, Abraham and Sarah, Moses, Miriam, Hannah, Samuel, Elijah, Elisha, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, John the Baptist, and all who walk, who by their words and deeds called your people to faithfulness in ancient times, we give you thanks, O Lord. By the words and deeds of those prophets, call us also to faithfulness in our day and in our land. By your mercy, O Lord, for the apostles, and other faithful witnesses in the early years of your church, Peter, James, John, and the rest of the twelve, for Mary, the mother of our Lord, Mary Magdalene, Mary and Martha of Bethany, and the rest of the women who ministered to Jesus, for Paul and all who boldly proclaimed your word of truth, for Stephen and all martyrs, we give you thanks, O Lord. By their example of faith, by which they were assured of things hoped for and convinced of things not seen, help us also to believe. For your faithful witnesses and servants down through the ages, Clement of Rome, Nicholas of Myra, Athanasius, Ambrose, John Chrysostom, Jerome, Augustine of Hippo, Patrick of Ireland, Hildegard of Bingen, Francis of Assisi, Thomas Aquinas, John Wycliffe, Jan Hus, Julian of Norwich, Martin and Katharina Luther, Philip Melanchthon, John Calvin, John and Charles Wesley, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, Martin Luther King Jr., Teresa of Calcutta, and all men and women who have devoted their lives to your service, we give you thanks, O Lord by their example of faith, by which they were assured of things hoped for and convinced of things not seen, help us also to believe. For those countless saints who have gone before us and are at rest, who by faithfulness in prayer, by compassionate words of truth, or by selfless deeds of mercy, have built up your church throughout the world, and caused your name to be glorified, many of whose names are no longer remembered among us, but are known to you. We give you thanks, O Lord, for our loved ones, family and friends who have died in the faith, whom you gave us to know and to love as companions for a while, while in our pilgrimage on earth. We give you thanks, O Lord, for the life of Elsie Detman, we give you thanks, O Lord. For the life of Shirley Kirkhoff, we give you thanks, O Lord. For the lives of all those whom we now name in our hearts before you, we give you thanks, O Lord. As you surrounded each of these saints with your steadfast love during their time on earth, surround us also with that same love, that we may be upheld and strengthened in all our struggles, that we may remain firm in our faith, and that we may face with good courage whatever lies ahead for as many days as you give us on this earth. In your mercy, hear us, good Lord. 
give us your aid so that we may see in death the gate to eternal life, that we may continue our course on earth in confidence until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before us. Through Christ our Lord. Watch, dear Lord, with those who wake or watch or weep, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, rest the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, comfort the bereaved, shield the joyous. Bless all who are in special need of your care this day. Larry Meyer, Kristen Dur, Alton Lean, Bill Richer, Barb Mathwig, Chuck Kalenberg, Caius Krohn, Sam Schumann, Sarah Kelly, Josh Abshire, Keith Richer, Steve Sangren, Donna Feigum, and all whom we now name in our hearts before you. In your mercy, hear us, good Lord. O Christ, hear us. In mercy, hear us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.